Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Burger Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 initiative coordination group. Under the energy of Burger, we continue our focus on 10 seed groups. And today we bring our collective focus to the seed group of magnetic healers. And today we invited a triangle of very distinguished guests to bring our collective focus on the opportunity of planetary healing and uh, uh, Philip Lindsay will share his thoughts on this topic and then Kathy Newburn and Dot Maver will join him leading as a triangle us in this process and uh, with this we continue our experiment working with the triangles of energies and uh, energy of Virgo is the secondary energy and bringing these uh, three speakers together we bring the secondary triangle of Virgo, Pisces and Gemini as Kathy Newburn will focalize the seed group of telepathic communicators in the sign of Pisces and Dot Maver was one of the speakers at the Gemini conference uh, this year. So thank you for joining today's webinar and I invite now Kathy Newburn to lead us in the alignment. Thank you Sasha and welcome everyone again from the New York Planetary Center. So let's just begin our alignment by withdrawing, focusing deep within ourselves and within the self of the group. And then establishing a vertical alignment Lift the energies to the group mind. And then because Virgo is known as a triple sign related to triangles, therefore, Let's open our collective mind to a potent triangle in the sky, in Earth. And at the apex, we'll place the great constellation Virgo, where the sun now finds itself. And Taurus, another Earth sign, wherein the seventh ray planet of Uranus is found. and creating the final point of that triangle, the planet Saturn, the planet of discipleship, where Capricorn is now placed in Capricorn. So let's visualize that golden triangle. open to the imploring energies of the second ray of love, wisdom. And let's visualize the fourth point of this shape as the earth. And now visualize the energies 
of the triangle pouring through and radiating to our earth. Visualize the earth as a radiant blue-green lotus. We'll close with the mantra, the mantra of light. Radiance are we and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy and Philip. Good evening to you. Thank you for joining us today. Good evening, Alex. Good evening, everyone else. Thank you, Kathy, for that beautiful interlude uh, in preparing this presentation for the 2025 initiative, it actually turned into my newsletter for this month. So, um, which most of you may have received by now and and perhaps read some. And um, so therefore I'm going, I'm not gonna read the whole newsletter. I'm gonna read bits and perhaps make comments as I go. How's the sound there, Alex, is that okay? Yes, your sound is good. Very good. Um, And also to mention uh, the second ray of love, wisdom, energy that has been uh, touched upon already by Alex and and Kathy uh, is apparently pouring through Virgo the strongest of any other sign in this particular long-term cycle. So it's quite significant time to really tap into those energies which are of course the energies of the Christ and the hierarchy and um, the month of Virgo is also one of the seven signs of the zodiac that is a conduit for the forces of Sirius to pour through and uh, Sirius, of course, has a very close relationship to the second ray of love wisdom. It's strong in the previous sign of Virgo, uh, of Leo, I should say, and other signs that I've written about in the past. And 
uh, a colleague has suggested that these seven signs represent seven aspects of the Syrian force as it pours through the zodiac. Anyway, I digress a little. Um, in last century, the Tibetan master Dwarsh Kul set up 10 C groups that he said were an experiment in starting focal points of energy through which certain energies could flow into humanity. And that experiment was to inaugurate new techniques in work and in modes of communication, he emphasizes, modes of communication. And he said those 10 C groups were the telepathic communicators, the trained observers, the magnetic healers, which is the subject of tonight, of course, the educators of the new age, political organizers, field of religion, scientific servers, psychologists, finance and economics, and, the t and point 10, the creative workers. So this group of magnetic healers uh, is described as such, quote, these healers have no relation to the work of the so-called magnetic healers of today. They work intelligently with the vital forces of the etheric body. This, this group of healers must bring about the right healing of the personalities of individuals in all aspects of their nature. The work to be done is that of the intelligent transmission of energy to various parts of the nature, mental, emotional, and physical, through the right organization and circulation of force. Their work will be group work and usually for a group. Magnetic healers must learn to work as souls and not as individuals. They must learn to communicate healing energy from the reservoir of living force to the patient or patients. And there's a graphic you can see there on the screen, but it's probably not that clear, um, indicating the 10 C groups, the United Nations, the Masters of Wisdom, and so forth. So, uh, as Kathy said, Virgo is a triple sign and you can see the triple Virgo glyph on your screen, hopefully there, Alex. Yes. Oh, okay. Very good. I have to switch screens to see that. Um, and Virgo, of course, is a sign that, that relates to healing on the mental, emotional, and physical planes. And the physical plane is the most well-known uh, aspect of Virgoan healing, such as diet, nutrition, health, um, and the physical healing arts, uh, and yoga, tai chi, qigong, all those kind of things. So it is just as much a sign of purification on the emotional or astral plane, probably more importantly so, uh, as it is on the mental plane. And as we go into the Aquarian age, this will become more obvious. Now, um, there are various reasons why Virgo is a sign of healing that I want to run through about six points here. The first point is the second ray of love wisdom being the major ray of the solar system, which we've already discussed. The second ray is the ray of healing and teaching. It's the indigo blue ray. Um, point two, the caduceus is the symbol of Mercury. You can see it there on your screen. The two serpents entwined around the staff of life, surmounted by the, the wings of the soul. Um, this is one of Mercury's main symbols. Mercury, the messenger, but Mercury has, has many profound roles. Um, we find as we delve deeper into esoteric astrology. So these, this triple sign of the caduceus reflects the, the, uh, the energies as they run up the spine, the Ida, Pingala and Shushumna Nadis. Mercury represents the mind, both higher and lower 
and he's and also the messenger between higher and lower mind. He's the builder of the Antakarana as well. So, point three. Virgo is an earth sign and the moon is the esoteric ruler, standing for Mother Earth or the mother of the world who embraces the entire planet. The moon represents the form nature that is to be healed and transcended. And again, we can see the higher and lower mind being represented by the moon and Mercury from, from a number perspective. Uh, especially if we consider the moon and its esoteric veiling of certain planets, such as Neptune, Uranus, or Vulcan. So, because they, moon, the moon and Mercury, which, by the way, are the rulers of the fourth ray of harmony through conflict or the ray of art and beauty, um, because they are the co rulers of Virgo, they bring that fourth ray energy in indirectly. Um, and because they indicate the activity of the high and lower mind, um, they are related to the third ray of active intelligence. And that ray was the primary ray or quality that was developed in the first solar system, which with, with which uh, Virgo is intimately connected. Uh, we are currently in the second incarnation of the solar logos in the second solar system where love wisdom is being developed. So it's interesting that Virgo is, uh, has such a strong second ray emphasis coming through it in this cycle, uh, given its very strong third ray influence in the past. And that third ray influence of the past concerns um, Virgo's highly discriminating mind and high intelligence. Typically speaking. Point four, the planet Vulcan is very important in relation to Virgo because it is through this first ray rulership of Vulcan the smithy who hammers out and fashions the form nature. Whatever part of that form is involved, physical, emotional or mental, there is a, a Vulcanian process going on there as well. Now, point five and the following points uh, relate very much to the feminine aspect of Virgo, the earth goddess, who sits opposite Pisces, the fish goddess. And both of these signs as, as in any polarity in, in astrology are important for invoking one another, for balancing the pairs of opposites within ourselves through the, the opposites in our own horoscope. So um, we have firstly Vesta, the Vestal Virgin, representing the chastity of the desire nature that is purified upon the astral or the emotional plane. She represents many other things too, of course. Um, all, of the, all of the asteroids actually associated with Virgo uh, are connected to nurturing physical uh, and otherwise. The next one is Sirius Demeter, the goddess of the grain that the symbol of Virgo reflects, the virgin goddess who holds a sheaf of wheat in her hands. And this represents physical plane nourishment as well as the nurturing of seed ideas on the mental plane. So we come back again to this, this mental intelligence factor of Virgo. Of course, Virgo rules the, the lower intestines where the the body discriminates between that which is of um, nourishment and that which is waste and separates the two. And likewise, on the mental plane, Virgo exercises discrimination and discernment. The shadow side of which, of course, is criticism. So this is where the polar opposite Pisces is invoked as a remedy for the separative lower mind that can tend to criticize and focus on criticism. Next, we have Hygieia, the goddess of healing, whose name, of course, implies hygiene. That's where that word came from. And Hygieia used serpents to find healing herbs in the forest, hence the uh, aforementioned caduceus symbol with the serpents. 
the picture of Hygieia is to your left in the old um, Gustav Klimt painting that you should be able to see there. Then we have the three goddesses of Virgo, Eve, Isis and Mary, that correspond to the mental, emotional and physical planes. I'm not going to read this next section because they are summarized in a table that follows later on that we can focus on more. Um, but DK tells us that the three goddesses embody in themselves the symbology of the entire form nature, which when integrated and functioning as a whole person, we call the personality. This personality is the third aspect of divinity, that of God, the Holy Spirit, the active, intelligent and nurturing principle of the universe. And of course, in esoteric astrology, the sun sign is regarded as the personality expression, the threefold lower self personality expression. Uh, whereas the rising sign, of course, is the soul expression that seeks, ex that seeks expression through the, the personality. Point six, the divine feminine qualities of Virgo, nurturing and protection. Virgo, DK tells us, is regarded by the esoteric teachers to be identified with the third aspect of divinity or the mother principle. Virgo, the virgin mother, represents the womb of time and also of threefold form nature as she guards the Christ principle within her own material substance. Then after a long gestation, she births the Christ child or soul. Virgo, of course, rules the caves of the earth. And similarly, so does Cancer. Um, and she symbolizes depth, darkness, quiet and warmth, uh, the womb. Uh, Virgo, DK tells us, is the valley of deep experience wherein secrets are discovered and eventually brought to light. It is the place of slow, gentle and yet powerful crises and periodic developments which take place in the dark in which, in which, and yet which lead to light. It is the blinded stage which is found in Masonic rituals as the picture on the screen depicts quite accurately. Um, and whichever precedes the gift of light. Virgo stands for the womb of time wherein God's plan, the mystery and the secret of the ages is slowly matured and with pain and discomfort and through struggle and conflict brought into manifestation at the end of the appointed time. And just a comment there, the struggle, pain and conflict all relates to the fourth ray of harmony through conflict which both the moon and Mercury, the rulers of Virgo, also rule, rule. And the conflict part of the equation is particularly to do with the moon because the moon in esoteric astrology is the dweller. It's, the, it's where we are blinded in, in terms of the shadow that we carry from life to life and which we can only really see through our interactions and relationships with other people. DK continues, today it would seem that we are entering into the eighth month of the gestation period. This is almost literally the case where humanity is concerned for counting from Virgo to Aquarius, the sign into which we are now entering. We find that there are just eight signs, Virgo, Leo, Cancer, Gemini, Taurus, Aries, Pisces and Aquarius. And this is surely the guarantee that the birth of the new age of the new consciousness and the new civilization and culture is inevitable and sure, unquote. Quite a profound statement there, especially in this age of uncertainty that we find ourselves in now on the cusp of 2025, ready to launch further into the age of Aquarius. You'll note these phrases too in this previous passage, such as 
secrets are discovered and eventually brought to light and also the blinded stage pointing to the profoundly subjective nature of Virgo and its skill for penetrating and traversing the depths and eventually re uh, revealing in the light. Also the, the scholarly nature of Virgo, which, which probes and is uh, meticulous and thorough. Now, part two of this newsletter is entitled Invoking Virgo for Healing Planet Earth. We've talked about the mother of the world, the great divic being who is in many ways the mother's the mother of all the masters. Um, and, and indeed, perhaps the consort of Sanat Kumara. Um, our planet now has reached a precarious crisis in most fields of human activity political, religious, educational, in the arts and sciences, in business and finance, in human relationships, in slavery and sexual exploitation, and in homelessness and the millions of refugees that, that wander the planet. All these themes are rampant and widespread around the globe. We are in a planetary crisis and have been for a while and will be for a while longer. We face global catastrophe through climate change and extreme weather, partly by humanity abusing the lower three kingdoms, the mineral, vegetable and animal. These latter themes pertain to the exoteric or outer Virgo, outer Virgo uh, where planetary healing and repair for the polluted oceans, land devastated by selfish mining practices um, and putting an end to scientific weather manipulation and so on. All those Virgo and healing factors are brought to bear. Yet some of these earth changes are cyclic in nature, unfolding over vast periods of time, where the, the, the poles move to the tropics, ice ages or meltings ensue, um, or there is, a decre there is increased volcanic and earthquake activity. And of this latter theme, uh, the occurrence, uh, more rapid, more regular occurrences have been predicted to increase in the next few thousand years. As humanity rides the cusp of the fifth root race, moving into the sixth root race, these purgings and purifications will take place to make way for the new. So many of these factors are cyclic and happen during the transition of the root races, but of course there are many, many uh, events that take place as well through fire and or water. So um, I identify two reasons why this has occurred in the present day and age. One, that humanity as a whole, through its lack of development and threefold personality integration, and of course, we're talking about the Virgo and Virgo and tri triplicity here. Seen as one body, uh, there is not the maturity or integration that has occurred yet. These people have not been able to use planetary resources responsibly through ignorance, poverty, greed, or apathy. Just say greed, greed, not greed, the, the composer. Um, uh, I wish. And the point two, a small proportion of humanity, a very mentally developed group, though a minority, have exploited and manipulated the planet's finite resources and money for no objective other than personal gain to live in material luxury, oblivious to the needs of the rest of humanity. This is becoming so obvious and, and so blatant in recent years, and many politicians are starting to speak out about this, this extraordinary imbalance in the few holding the world's resources. So in terms of the Virgo triplicity and of the mental, emotional and physical planes, I see this situation in the world today as being from an overdevelopment of the mental principle, especially in this mentally polarized this root race with the side effects of arrogance, greed and separativeness. 
the principle of compassion has been bypassed. Ironically, in this fading age of Pisces, where it could have been developed to a much greater degree. Hence, to use the earlier correspondences, the goddess Eve has been favoured and Isis has been ignored, even to the point where her sacred name is tarnished by an acronym for a terrorist group who embody the basest expression of human hatred. And therein lies the pair of opposites, love and hate. Yet groups like this are simply a byproduct of a prevailing lopsided global culture of aggression and selfishness. Some would argue that there's not much difference. Therefore, to use the Virgoan symbolism again, a disconnect has occurred in the overall threefold integration of humanity between Eve and the mental plane and Mary upon the physical plane. And if you look at this table now, uh, we can see the, um, the three aspects of Eve, Isis and Mary, mental plane, astral plane, physical plane, corresponding to the three higher uh, aspects of will, love and intelligence. Of course, the love aspect corresponds to the astral plane. The astral plane is the lower reflection of, of the love principle and so forth. And the various chakras associated with that. So Eve is about the lure of knowledge to be gained through the experience of incarnation. Uh, Isis represents the quickening of that which is desired, the fertility, fertility, motherhood, and the guardian. Of course, Mary births the Christ child upon the physical plane. The soul is born after its long gestation in the womb of matter or of time and space, if you like. So Isis, and you can see her picture there, the winged Egyptian Isis below, represents the middle principle of compassion and its emotional reflection. And she currently languishes while humanity lags in its development. As stated earlier, the second ray of love wisdom pours through Virgo more powerfully than any other sign. Virgo represents the birth of the Christ within the cave of the heart, which is basically the first initiation. And this is occurring in large numbers of humanity at the moment. We can take heart from this. We can't necessarily see it because it's so easily obfuscated by the seeming that, that we are bombarded with through media uh, on the surface every day. So now that we are approaching the externalization of the hierarchy, the Christ and the masters of wisdom will return into human context sometime after 2025. It could be as late as 2050, but they are going to set their, their date from that time on their, on their once in a century conclave. And so we are in the shadow of that particular date, as we all know. And that's why this 2025 initiative has been uh, has been instigated. So this extraordinary planetary event has not occurred since when the hierarchy were forced to withdraw from human contact during the dark days of Atlantis after the Atlantean War. And their imminent their imminent appearance, reappearance, I should say has been planned for centuries. And as we near the year 2025, the forces of materialism, of course, are fighting furiously to prevent that occurring. And these forces work through their selfish agents upon the physical plane in all areas of human expression. Noticeably, of course, in politics, science, and particularly big business. And you'll note that these departments of human activity are all upon the hard line ray or the hard ray line of 1357, the energy of will as it works through the mental rays. Thus, it appears and appearances do not necessarily reflect the truth that the materialistic global trend is so deeply entrenched that changing attitudes is a daunting task for light workers due to difficult economic circumstances, 
apathy or conditioned thinking. Here's where the individual can team up with a special interest group and make a contribution instead of feeling powerless by themselves. Materialism was the problem that led to the downfall of Atlantis, where the crime of theft was paramount, we are told by the master DK. He says, quote, to procure what they coveted and felt they needed, the most highly evolved of that race began to practice magic. Words of power employed and carefully planned rituals followed by those who sought to enrich themselves and to take what they wanted, no matter what the cost to others. And so today, this theft has been refined and developed, diffused globally. Theft of global resources, corporate tax avoidance, theft of personal data and identities, theft of personal livelihoods in the name of profit, theft of land, people, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on and on. In other words, we haven't really learnt our Atlantean lessons yet. And DK does say elsewhere in the teachings, that humanity is still primarily Atlantean in consciousness, despite the fact that we've reached a pinnacle of mental development in this fifth root race, what I call the 5.5.5 in my hidden history work. <clears throat> so despite great initiatives currently underway to address many of these world problems, it is sometimes difficult to gauge how far humanity is ahead of the game. Can we take comfort in the previous passage that stated, quote, the birth of the new age of the new consciousness and the new civilization and culture is inevitable and sure? Can we reject the serpent of doubt as Master Moyo describes it, or the so-called swarm of small worms of doubt that require a lengthy cure? So humanity has evolved very rapidly in the past 70 years, equivalent to centuries of evolution. We must reflect upon how uneven or lopsided our development has been through science and technology, for example, and what urgent steps are needed to remedy the situation for the ailing patient, which is humanity. Here we must apply Virgo discrimination or Vivica to discern the real from the unreal what options lay open for humanity, hierarchy, and those who are part of the new group of world servers? Various scenarios include the following, real or imagined. Firstly, scenario one, the disciples and aspirants of the world will, will prevail. They will rise to the occasion and through dedicated tireless labor, effect changes. They will consolidate upon work already started and follow it through to completion they will work with cease, ceaseless perseverance. These aspirants and disciples form the new group of world servers who work objectively and subjectively throughout the world. A smaller portion of the new group of world servers are esoterically trained and have an opportunity to work subjectively through meditation, ritual and other activities, continually adding to the emerging paradigm of the new Aquarian principles. But we could ask the question, are all aspirants and disciples of the world really doing enough? Are their hearts on fire with the spirit of service? Are they living up to the expectations of the hierarchy or have they become lazy and distracted and failed collectively to measure up? In this respect, there is a lesson from the past that we might reflect upon. In the Disciple New Age, in the New Age books or Diner books by Alice Bailey, we were, they were about the several groups of disciples to which the Master DK gave, in personal, gave personal instructions. Despite the fact that these groups had the extraordinary privilege of a Master of Wisdom guiding them, and there were many advanced disciples in these groups, DK actually disbanded them because of several reasons. Firstly, the group was not integrated and had produced no particular spiritual enterprise. Many of them did less for the triangle work, the goodwill work and the distribution of the invocation than the average school student. 
but did not aid DK as he had requested. Secondly, failure in occult obedience. Many did absolutely nothing about their personal instructions from DK. And thirdly, members who did not agree with some instructions claimed it was Alice Bailey making the statement. And when the, inst the instructions were favorable, they felt it was from DK himself. There was a fourth point that was deleted in the original text. Could it have been perhaps laziness? And this recalls also DK's encouragement at the end of one of his books, Work My Brothers. We might well ask rhetorically, why would the performance of disciples in this day and age without the guidance of the master be any better than it was between the 1920s and 1950s when DK had his various groups of disciples that he experimented with. Okay, so that's the first scenario with regarding us as members of the new group of world service. The second scenario that may radically change the course of, of human decision making and getting it together to heal the planet may be a financial crash that is the worst the world has ever seen. An event that has been predicted for the past decade, creating grave short-term hardship like the 1930s depression, for instance, but eventually birthing a fairer economic system and redistribution of wealth. Of course, there is this other passage that DK discusses that the Christ and the hierarchy cannot return until at least 51% of the wealth is in the hands of the forces of light. As far as we can see, or what appears today in the world, the vast fortunes held by everyone from movie stars to businessmen to, to people on Wall Street uh, and corporations seems to be selfishly harbored and not shared with the rest of humanity. So that was scenario two. Scenario three, through humanity not being able to affect change in sufficient time, the hierarchy drastically intervenes and the one who holds the office of the Manu unleashes more cataclysms than was originally planned as a planetary correction, quote unquote, forcing humanity to transform and to live in a greater spirit of cooperation with one another. Scenario four gets a little bit darker where the forces of materialism take over and subject this planet to slavery just as the Nazi plan to do so in World War II almost succeeded. Would hierarchy contemplate walking away from humanity just as they had prepared to do so during World War II when the Nazis appeared close to success? This is a truly shocking prospect to consider that the hierarchy was going to desert humanity because of its inherent selfishness. Fifth, fifth and final scenario is a third world nuclear war that emerges and destroys the planet. And of course, we know that this is unlikely, but it's mentioned because it is a fear that many people have and is continually perpetuated by various world leaders. Foster Bailey stated in one of his later books in the 1970s that the hierarchy will not allow a nuclear war to occur. And it is also said that the so-called watching extraterrestrials will not allow it either. Edgar Mitchell, the astronaut, makes some comments about this, as do many other professionals. So some of these points may seem horrific, but actually name the residual fears that all of humanity hold at this critical hour of unfolding planetary karma. These points summarize what many people think, fear and speculate upon. And there are probably other ones, of course. The conjunction of Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn in January 2020 symbolizes when many of these global problems may come to a head for resolution one way or the other. Now, I have another section after this, which I'm not going to go through. 
but it's basically a summary of statistics about the good things that are happening on this planet and are moving forward and have improved um, that you can read for yourself in the newsletter. How are we going for time there, Alex? Um, I would suggest we open up now a discussion, inviting uh, Kathy and Dot to yeah. join the conversation yeah. and that we would still would have some time for the questions and comments okay. from the audience. Can I just mention a couple of paragraphs from the next section because it's important with regard to the theme of women and the renaissance of women. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So Virgo is a feminine sign. How do we use the energies of Virgo to bring about the healing of a planet? How can we work upon the missing link of love and wisdom that is so scarce in the hearts of so many political and business groups that control our lives, who are, by the way, primarily male? Um, how can there be a love wisdom subversion, if you like, effected that will open hearts, that will prick collective consciousness, consciences and consciousness? Are these people really beyond our reach, these fellow members of humanity? If we return to this ISIS theme, we can see that the solution is very obvious. Fostering the age of the divine feminine has gained increased momentum over the past few decades. It has encouraged the awakening of the heart and reminds us that humanity as a whole is lifting its collective consciousness from the solar plexus to the heart. And I have a bit more detail about that, which I won't go into now and some diagrams and so forth and the gradual upliftment and liberation of women in the world in general, which is very encouraging in terms of the long-term cycle, even though it's far from perfect now. So I think I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you, Philip, for all of those interesting points. Um, I just have a few things to add and um, then we can have a broader discussion perhaps. Um, you mentioned probably most of the things that I'm going to say but it's always good to have a repetition of these ideas. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've always sensed is the strong relationship between the sign of Virgo and our planet, our tiny non-sacred planet, the Earth. And he doesn't, the Tibetan doesn't give us an exoteric rulership um, for Virgo and uh, for the earth. I mean, it just, it's not, it's only ruling in two signs in Gemini hierarchically and also in Sagittarius, as you know, esoterically. But I, I do believe he hints rather strongly that there is an exoteric uh, sign that it also rules and I do think that the earth rules Virgo and therefore mm. when we come to a consideration of the influence and the impact of this importing of second ray energies from this great sign and as you mentioned I think um, you mentioned a connection that you believe to be between um, Sirius as well and mm. as Virgo, it makes sense to me that that would be the case and that, as you said, this connection between that great star of sensitivity, the great overshadowing constellation, we might say, that its energy is also pouring in very powerfully into our planet at this time. And therefore, the second race soul of our planet Earth is certainly being stimulated to come to um, the aid. Because I think that although you outlined, you know, different scenarios, future scenarios, I think there might be a fifth one that I might add, which would be all of those things occurring within consciousness, all of those things that are occurring mm -hmm. at a subjective level mm -hmm. that we might fail to foresee. Um, because that's really the opportunity that's being held out to us at this time as we move into this period wherein there is a great intense inpouring of light and love. And this inpouring coupled with 
all of the souls that are coming into incarnation who can uh, be standing as purified vehicles for that love, I think that there could be um, situations occurring, transformations within consciousness, which will move us, as I said, in directions that, that we can't foresee. And so we should mm. uh, do what we can to broaden our collective consciousness and place it on the side of the light and the love and the many, many factors that are aiding us to make that shift to that higher level of consciousness, which so many groups and individuals are talking about this time of uh, planetary healing. Um, and I think that Virgo, in relationship to that, in relationship to this idea of planetary healing, uh, the passage that you read from, I forget, I think it's the Dina book about the 10 seed groups and the actual impulse of the magnetic healers. Um, we noted that the Tibetan talks about the fact that this will be healing by groups primarily for groups. And I think mm -hmm. if we extend it at this time to this idea of planetary healing, as Sasha chose for the theme here, we come to one of the real potentials of the full moon group. And it's, that's why it's such an opportunity for us to come together at this full moon period to work collectively as small groups all throughout the planet, coming together, as you said, linking with the souls of those groups and then radiating the energies here, here the energies of love, wisdom, our soul rulership into all of the darkened avenues of the earth through the five chakras of the planet, the five planetary centers. Um, if we do that month in and month out, as we do for year in and year out, I think this is one of the most important tools that we can use that's quite simple and that all of us can participate in, no matter where we are, this kind of planetary healing can move more fully into realization. Hmm. And so the final point that I just wanted to make is that another activity which probably everyone on this webinar is familiar with is the daily work of triangles, um, which hmm. serves to solidify the relationship because the second ray is really about relationship. Our great logos has the theme of relationship the triangles work really serves to bring about an activation of the three planetary centers of Shambhala, hierarchy and humanity. And therefore, as that relationship is solidified, which is possible, the Tibetan says, at this particular time in planetary history, and not forever, but because of the situation that's being set up on the planet now, there is the possibility held out for this interrelationship, this great planetary triangle to form. And so I think um, as we participate in triangles, as we form new triangles, we use the planetary etheric body to become a vehicle for this light and love. So there are things we can do and no matter where we are, no matter what our condition, uh, we can participate in these things. So thank you. Very well said. Okay. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Philip and Kathy. Uh, this is Dot. And I would just uh, care to uh, share just a couple of things in response to Philip to your newsletter and sharing today, and Kathy to your comments and regarding uh, the invocation of Virgo for, for planetary healing. And the, the first is, uh, we welcome the mother of the world as she lifts her veil in these times of the realization of harmony through conflict. The second, Philip, you referred to ISIS and compassion and kind of the, the missing key in a way. And in esoteric healing, uh, we, we read about the world problem and appalling disruption of our time uh, due to this shift from the solar plexus to the heart, the energies uh, both for the disciple and for the world disciple, humanity, yep. with the birth of Christ in the cave of the heart. And so the third point 
being the realization of unity and synthesis, such keynotes for Virgo as we stand with the Christ in the fire of love to the glory of the one, Christ in you, the hope of glory, which leads us to a response to each of those three. One, uh, as Kathy just, just shared, our role as the new group of world servers, as healers through the recognition of the feminine principle, our rhythmic group work for the world disciple, humanity as a group, with our hearts on fire with the spirit of service. And second, want to ec echo your comments, Philip, and specifically from your newsletter, with no criticism of our brothers and sisters, there is no othering. What there is as we continue this journey is a deeper understanding of what is actually transpiring and the capacity to, number three, to meet the opportunity of the moment to tell the emerging story of the revelation of our time, mm. of oneness. As we recognize the spiritual impulses of these times in the midst of an all systems break, breakdown, and we tell the story of those spiritual impulses that actually define an all systems breakthrough. Because Philip, I'm casting my vote with your number one. Thank you. Let, okay. let us do what, what we can and move through this time of crisis with intention, with love, with wisdom, and knowing that joy is a special wisdom. Absolutely. And if I might, if I might add, with your comment about the solar plexus, it is indeed the upheaval within the solar plexus of humanity that is creating so much confusion and and pain upon the planet at the moment. It's, it's a birthing, it's a birthing of of great numbers of people into the first initiation, and. Um, this is a process that's been going on since World War One, and has been continuing for the last century, really. And um, so all those forces in the solar plexus that, that want to remain or, or keep the status quo uh, and, and are resisting the changes are contributing, of course, to the conflict and the pain um, as they hold on to the past and as another proportion of humanity reach for the future. I wanted to share something um, which again reminds me of Virgo and the, the lessons of this sign and it's um, a quote about Creative life is from a section, I believe, in esoteric psychology um, related to the, cre the urge to create and the potential that um, perhaps is on the rise now in the world as the fourth ray begins soon to come into cyclic manifestation. Um, and it's it says, if I can find this here, uh, let's see, yeah. It, it relates to me to Virgo because it relates to this idea of the veiled woman, uh, one of the symbols of this sign, the woman who is living, as you mentioned, Philip, the subjective life, um, whose focus and gaze is not hung up on the outer, perhaps, uh, problems that we have in the world today. Not that mm. she's turning away from them, but she's finding her direction mm. and her guidance from the subjective realities. And so um, this quote says, there's no need for too great an upward straining or too intense an outward looking. That which is to be revealed lies all around us and within us. It is the significance of all that is embodied in form, the meaning behind the appearance, the reality veiled by the symbol, the truth expressed in substance. And he goes on to state that this growing subjective orientation 
once it's cultivated by increasing numbers of humanity, will lead to the creation of simpler forms. Because he says beauty is revealed through simplicity of form, but that it's veiled in multiplicity of form. And so yeah. as we as we can seek to bring this energy of simplicity, uh, which is so much of a challenge in a world of increasing multiplicity, if we can strive to maintain, particularly at these interlude periods, a, a connection, a stronger connection with this simplicity, then perhaps we can begin increasingly to live more and more of each month um, it, more in alignment with the subjective realities, which is what we're asked to do. And this sign, I think, is a great symbol of that. It's a brilliant point, Kathy, because Virgo exoterically is such a sign of complexity and detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yet its highest aspect is, as you stated, has to do with complete simplicity. Yes. Yeah. I think that relates to the um, another point that I wanted to make that most people probably know, but that when we're fo when we're focusing here on the Earth a little, at least I believe there is such a strong relationship between Virgo and the Earth. We know that each month when the Sun is in one polarity, that the earth and its etheric field finds itself in the opposite polarity. And so we as individuals are now bathing in an etheric network ruled by the opposite sign from Virgo, which is Pisces, and which speaks very much to that wholeness, that um, Neptunian love that mm. is the other half of the Virgoan experience. So. Um, as we always remember to bridge between these opposites, then we bring in a new energy, a blended mm -hmm. dual energy. And so I think that we have to remember we're bathing in that uh, Piscean field. Yeah. yeah well, indeed, the mutable cross. Um, yeah, the whole cross. Gemini, for instance, is very strong on the etheric. One thing that came came to mind before when you mentioned the um, earth being associated with the rulership of Virgo, you know, Mother Earth, um, is the exaltation of the asteroid Chiron mm -hmm. in Virgo, which I forgot to mention in my newsletter actually, when I was going through mm -hmm. all those asteroids. And DK tells us that the in various places in Cosmic Fire and, and the other books that the asteroids are intimately related to the etheric. So um, Chiron's position um, or exaltation, symbolism of that, the wounded healer, the half man, half horse, um, concerns Virgo and Sagittarius, actually, the other part of the mutable cross. But there's an association there with Chiron and the Earth. Yeah. And it's in, as you know, it's in Pisces now. So it's... Yes, in the last bringing, degree of Pisces. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know, maybe it's already still in Aries, but yeah, it's been in that powerful position. So mm -hmm. I, I heard a lecture um, recently where I thought was really interesting, where the speaker, Michael Luton, was stating that that last degree of Pisces, the last degree of the zodiacal wheel was a real opportunity for a, like a global planetary healing at that moment. And I, I thought that was a very interesting point. Mm -hmm. And we will go back through that degree, I believe. So, yeah. So I'm wondering, is it is there timing enough, Alexander? May we open it up for group comment for those who are on the webinar? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we invite now uh, people in the audience to share their thoughts or maybe questions. Uh, in either in the chat section, uh, the question section of your control panel, or raising your hand. It's a uh, button on your control panel, and we will unmute you so you could contribute. And um, 
there is a sh uh, the sharing came on the on the um, from our, one of the participants uh, that there is a news alert uh, now uh, that there is a mass shooting in Florida uh, happened now no details yet but every soul matters may we be seriously dedicated to service So as we come to the meditation, we can keep our intention on the of the healing energies, focusing the healing energies for the planets and the communities that are on fire, and bringing all that that suffering that's happening to the shift in the consciousness that will initiate the healing. There is a comment from Antonella. Interesting also the synthesis between opposites, Virgo Pisces, criticism, compassion, discrimination, psychism, substance to be saved, the savior. If any of uh, the triangles uh, Focalizers want to step in with your thoughts any moment, please. Yeah, uh, just mm -hmm. uh, briefly, uh, the Virgo Pisces polarity is is fascinating um, in terms of the lower expression of Virgo, particularly in the separative criticism that it's well known for versus the complete acceptance of Pisces, the opposite sign that, that, that absolves or dissolves all that um, criticism with a, with, a, with a whole embracing heart or a sense of forgiveness, uh, an ability to receive, to listen, um, and to exercise loving understanding. So, yeah, there, there, there was uh, another one that I've mentioned over the years uh, called the cruelty kindness uh, uh, polarity that is also involved in this as well. Um, many people are, com are capable of great compassion, but they can be very cruel as well. And this is not unusual for, for even many of disciples. Um, so it's uh, we could list probably dozens of polarities between all the signs, of course. But the the unique thing about the unique will be uh, what's the word uh, the the paradox again uh, with lower Virgo, higher Virgo is that Virgo is can be extraordinarily separative and critical in that third aspect intelligence factor, and yet it it has the highest capacity of second rate love, wisdom, healing that embraces all as much as Pisces does. Second ray comes through both signs, but apparently stronger through Virgo at this point. Um, yeah, as you're sharing... Go ahead, Kath. No, go ahead. Just very briefly, as you're sharing that, Philip, what comes to mind is uh, your comment that uh, we know, right, materialism was the downfall of Atlantis. and we're still learning Atlantean lessons and just holding the pain and suffering of all these shootings, so much violence uh, on the planet at this time. And what we know from uh, externalization of the hierarchy, the leaders of that time, of that Atlantean time, are holding key leadership positions in this time. Yes. And it's so in my way of thinking, it really is what both you, Kathy, and Philip have shared in this webinar. The key is really consciousness. And so many of us now conscious of what is going on and consciously choosing to be in this kind of rhythmic group work on behalf yeah. of the greater. I, 
perceive can be the invocative uh, turning point because we become a point of evocation as well. Yes. There is also another factor about the fact that the USA is one of the largest remaining chunks of the old Atlantean continents. And so a lot of the, the land is, is uh, you know, magnetized from that time. Um, and as we go into the sixth root race, which is on the even ray line or the even root race line, we find ourselves re recapitulating the fourth root race energies, negative and positive, as we move into the sixth root race, as we transition from the fifth root race to the sixth root race. So um, those things can be easily invoked and stirred up, especially by the souls that you mentioned who uh, were incarnate back then. We all were, of course, um, but who who are stepping into to, uh, old roles that, that they should have relinquished lifetimes ago. This, this adds to the complexity of the transition of the ages and the transition from one ray of the sixth ray to the seventh ray. And of course, the transition from one root race to another. There is a raised hand, um, so I will unmute uh, Jose. Hi, can you hear me well? Yes. yes. This is Jose Becerra. Thank you very much for your reflections. Uh, I um, really enjoyed uh, Philip's um, ways to uh, relate to Virgo to healing. Uh, as well as Kathy's and that's uh, comments on that. Um, I'm particularly interested in the in the phrase uh, the mother of the world. Uh, I know that I, it's a prominent uh, image uh, in Philip's uh, web page and that mentioned it and has been uh, mentioned by, uh, by Kathy too I think. Uh, I think we may uh, use this uh, full moon in Virgo opportunity also as a healing opportunity in the teachings of uh, the, the, the very teachings and the mother of the world and the way the most uh, early students interpret the phrase in esoteric healing about uh, the non-existence of the planetary entity called the mother of the world. And uh, I would like to invite uh, all of us to to reflect on that uh, and to consider the possibility that even though uh, the Master Decay has uh, stated that such an entity doesn't exist in the planetary life, uh, that we may consider the existence of an extra planetary entity, probably related closely with, uh, with the planet Venus, that may serve as a focal point for this emergence, emergence of the divine feminine, uh, so much needed uh, on the planet today. So much of the teachings is uh, worded in terms of uh, masculine uh, terminology and pronouns. And I think uh, uh, it is my, uh, my guess that maybe this may be part of the forthcoming 2025 revelation on the new dispensation uh, and that uh, at last uh, the veiled mother as the queen of the Deva kingdom uh, may become revealed. I just want to share that and to, uh, as my contribution to the group thought at this point. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jose. I think there's some very interesting ideas there with regard to Venus, which is, as we know, the higher self to this planet. And in one respect, you could see the mother of the world being an emissary from that planet or from the Venus chain of the Earth scheme. Um, some very interesting reflections to, to um, enter into there for sure.
Yeah, it's, it's thank you, so, Jose, for your thoughts. Sometimes I look, I like to look at the feminine aspect as a symbol of the matter aspect. And so if we simply think of mm, the matter aspect and the, its purification through, particularly through this sign of Virgo, we can see how strong uh, there is a need for that in our world, but also how the rectification of the abuses that women have suffered surely has a key role to play in moving our planet forward into a greater light. So I, I do agree with you that this is certainly a theme that uh, is of importance to our, our planet, which is after all called the mother, you know, esoterically, it is called the mother. So. And they say that the intuition is this elusive feminine principle and the veiled mother veils that hidden intuition that hasn't been developed yet. Yeah, um, yeah something there about that too. And I do, I do agree with you also, Jose, that there's this interesting statement. I'm not sure it's um, exactly what you're getting at, but interesting statement in esoteric astrology, wherein the Tibetan says that in up until now, astrologers have been heavily under observation of the planet Mars. But as we move into the new age, they would be advised to observe more closely the cycles of the planet Venus. And I'm sure you're aware of um, those cycles somewhat and how if we begin to try and attune ourselves, not only to the full moon periods and the new moon periods, but also to the periods when we have, I guess you could call it a full Venus and a new Venus, um, that these two are, are very important. And you probably know uh, about the pentagonal shape that- Yes, I do. Earth, yeah, the Earth and Venus make with one another as they dance around the sun. All these things have powerful meanings for us as we begin to like participate in, the, in that cycle. I feel I, uh, my responsibility to bring the father aspect now into the conversation, which is the <laughs> Kronos time. <laughs> we are getting very close to the uh, time located um, to this webinar, so I suggest we go now into meditation, focusing all that, bringing all that focus that's been created through the group dynamic into the higher realm. And so if you feel it could lead us into meditation. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let us all settle ourselves a little bit. Take a few breaths and just release the activity of this past hour or so. Imagining ourselves as one integrated group within the group of the new group, uh, group of world service. Seeing ourselves high up in the stratosphere, looking down upon our beautiful blue planet. Contemplating all its kingdoms of nature, mineral, vegetable, animal, human, the kingdom of souls. And we have this marvelous sense of wholeness of the inherent health of the planet that can be restored so easily when we think about it. And of course, the interconnectedness and the relationship between all kingdoms that all serve one another, that are all consciousness, 
that are all an expression of the Lord of the world. And so we bathe in the energies of the embrace of the mother of the world. Sensing the love, the unconditional love and compassion and healing that we can invoke from this being. And we can consider her polar opposite as uh, her consort, if you like, Sana Kumara, the Lord of the world, the one who holds the purpose and the plan, the destiny of this planet. And as we ponder this great unity, we bring our attention to the gathered members of the hierarchy who have been congregating and focusing their forces around this full moon period over the last few days. As they receive yet another aspect of the plan to implement from the planetary center we call Shambhala. And as they distribute that plan through the ashrams, through the new group of world servers, on to humanity and all the other kingdoms And so we play our part with stern resolve as members of the new group of world servers, as intermediaries between hierarchy and humanity. And open ourselves to receive those impressions as a group, as individuals. As a filter for the forces that emanate from Shambhala and hierarchy. So we sense these descending energies of love wisdom in particular, descending from the higher to the lower, visualizing them passing through us, through our being. And then consciously taking these forces and broadcasting them around the entire planet, particularly directing them to the five planetary centers, London, New York, Darjeeling, Geneva, Tokyo. And we see those energies pouring through those centers, radiating outwards across those nations, those continents, suffusing all life that lays in their path. spreading and surrounding the planet with a powerful radiating light.
And as we hold that visualization, continuing to be a conduit for these forces passing from the higher to the lower, we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Philip, Kathy, Dot. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everyone. Gratitude for all. Please let's be connected in this vast global network of light. And we invite you to join our coming webinars. This coming new moon and the design of Virgo, we will continue our work with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, uh, focusing on the goal 13, climate action. During the Equinox Festival, we will continue working with the four 
eight-bit cycle of equinox solstices, and uh, Nicholas Nguyen will lead us in the conversation on the astrology of the uh, ten seed groups. And uh, in the next uh, full moon webinar, we will focus on the seed group of economists and financiers together with Michael Linfield. So let's stay connected and. I invite Dot to sound the final mantra. In this time of the great turning of so many cycles, major and minor, let us reflect on cyclic outbreathing and inbreathing as we close with the ancient Indian mantra, the Gayatri. O thou, who givest sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return. Unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by a disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Oh.